Hi everyone, my name is Ramin Zahed. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Animation Magazine, and I'm here to introduce you to our 2024 Rising Stars of Animation. This is a feature that we do annually, and we spotlight some up-and-coming uh, artists who are uh, making a big difference in the world of animation, and they have some wonderful new projects coming up, or maybe they just wrapped a show or a movie, and uh, we ask them to tell us a little bit about themselves, and how they manage to get their projects made and kind of uh, give us advice on how to thrive in this crazy, fast-changing world of animation. Uh, this year we've got uh, uh, a wonderful, uh, eclectic, diverse group of uh, artists who are connected to shows like The Second Best Hospital in the Galaxy, Ariel, Fairy Odd Parents, A New Wish, uh, Jurassic Park Chaos Theory, Grimsburg, Bat Family, Millie Magnificent, Tabby McTad, and movies like uh, Netflix's That Christmas, Ultraman Rising, uh, Pixar's Inside Out 2, and of course DreamWorks Kung Fu Panda 4, which just came out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I hope you enjoy what they have to say. We are grateful to them for sharing their time and uh, career advice with us, and hope you all enjoy it. Thank you so much. My name is Shiraco Dunlap and I created a show called The Second Best Hospital in the Galaxy and I have found that I just have to make stuff. I have to make stuff when I feel terrible and I have to make stuff when I feel amazing and I want you to do that too because no one can tell stories like you. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Avin Mano and I am a barista. No, I am an animator at Pixar and Mr. Studios. Uh, this is how I start my day. Sometimes. Sometimes I make tea. But most days I make coffee. How did I get here? So when I was a junior at Ringling College of Art and Design uh, in Florida studying animation, I applied through the website um, with a reel of all my work from school and uh, I just sent it and a few months later I got an email saying, hello, we are from Pixar, uh, would you like to come for an internship? And I said, is this a scam? And they said, no, it's for real. So I said, yep. And I got to come on as an animation intern that summer. And it was amazing. And I went back to school and finished my senior year and graduated. And after that, I came on full time on Toy Story 4. And I've been here since. So, yep. I'm currently working on Inside Out 2. And I've been on it for almost two years now. And one of my favorite things about this project is the fact that everybody is so collaborative and open to ideas from anywhere. Um, often, we, as an animator, I'd get a, a shot or a moment in the film, and the director would say, this is kind of the general direction, but really open to what you have to bring into it. And that's kind of been the philosophy throughout the whole process. Everybody's welcome to bring their ideas and kind of bring it to the next level. Um, it's really cool to, to have people kind of trust you with their baby, uh, which is really all of our baby. Um, yeah. Challenges? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is always trying to live up to your own expectation from yourself. You know, where you're surrounded by world-class artists and everybody's the best at what they do. You're always pushing yourself to prove that you belong. But I think one of the greatest lessons I've learned here is to fail all the time because that's the only way to kind of get to that next level. And it's really cool to see people who've been doing it for 20, 30 years still not being afraid to fail and kind of open up that space to just try stuff. And, and I think that's really where the good stuff comes from. Uh, advice. One of the best pieces of advice I got from one of my peers in school, um, actually upperclassman, uh, Ayara, uh, he said, and I kind of take it to this day with me, he said, when you're setting goals for yourself, really try to stay in your own lane instead of comparing yourself to other people. And I think it's really easy to, as artists, to start comparing ourselves and not really focus on what we like to do and our individual goals. 
So whenever you're, you know, looking at yourself in five years and 10 years and where you want to be, I think it's really healthy to see yourself kind of, you know, in the same level as your idols, you know, as a, as a shooting for the stars kind of thing. And then what's the worst that could happen? You know, you could maybe fall on the way there and, and get a little bit less than that. But I think if you're always thinking, you know, who are my peers who are surrounding me and trying to kind of shine within them instead of using that community to, to help each other grow, it's really hard to build a community and to kind of lift yourself out of that place of always comparing. So yeah, thanks everyone. Hello, my name is Ashley Hairston, and I am co-executive producer, co-story editor, writer, and the voice of Hazel Wells on The Fairly Odd Parents and New Wish. Okay, so how I got this job. Uh, it's a very long story, but basically what happened was I came here to Los Angeles in 2012. I immediately got into comedy and improv and sketch comedy, and I learned how to write uh, characters and then I started performing around town and people kept saying that you have a great voice, you should do voiceovers. And I was like, well, that's not what I came to Los Angeles to do. You know, I came here to do acting. So I signed up for an intro to animation class and I quickly realized, oh yeah, <laughs> duh, I am totally a character. My first job that I booked was for Marvel, Avengers Assemble. And then after that, I booked a reoccurring role on a show called Crepe of the Creek. And during pandemic, I had, you know, uh, had been sort of going in and building relationships at Nickelodeon. And they were aware of, you know, my sketch comedy background. And they knew that I was very much a physical comedy actor and like loved doing characters. And so when they came to me with Fairly Odd Parents. They already had um, a couple of the co-executive producers on the team already. They had Dave Stone and they had Lindsay Katai, both of whom are amazing, who I love. And that's how I got to be here. <laughs> okay, so what I love about this job, I love literally everything. I love our team. I think we had just have the best team ever. And I know I'm biased in saying that. All of our production crew who keep our whole show running, um, and keep us on schedule. Whew. Our design team, our art director, Patrick Morgan, who's amazing. Our CG team with Daniel, just everyone. Casting, records, everyone at Nickelodeon is so nice. <laughs> it's just like where you go to be a kid. It's like so nostalgic. And there was always like fun events happening on the campus and like our energy level would just be like skyrocketing every time we would go in. I love obviously our show. I'm so proud of it. It's so beautiful. It is just near and dear to my heart. And yes, I'm voicing the character, but I think she's adorable. Everyone's going to love her and relate to her too. If you want to work in animation, my advice is to just keep going. I know that's cliche and sounds really boring. <laughs> Get involved, whether that's with a community any kind of community, art program, writing program, sketch writing program, you know, a group of writers that meet once a week to like read material, whatever it is, you keep making connections and growing your circle. Because at some point your friends are going to be the ones making decisions, you know, and hopefully they can bring you on. Always be good to people. People like to work with people that they like and that are fun and bring a great energy. You never know what doors will open for you. You never know who's thinking of you. You never know who's pitching your name in a room right now. So stay positive, don't get discouraged, keep going. That's my advice. And yeah, that's all. <laughs> what are the big challenges? What kind of advice do you give people who wanna work in animation? Uh, what is the best advice I ever got working in animation? That is so many questions. Hi. I wanted to be a director ever since I was a kid. My name is T.G. Hopkins, and I'm here today to talk to you about directing for animation. I work for Bento Box Entertainment on Grimsburg, Fox, Sunday nights at 9.30. Well, I got this job by uh, working on the pilot as a storyboard artist and really believing this is a show I should be directing on. And so I sent an email to uh, my producer and I said, hey, this show gets picked up. I'd really like to be in the running to direct on it. I think I could bring a lot to the project. 
And uh, I didn't hear back. But then when I heard the show got picked up, I sent another email and said, hey, I think I'd be really good for the project. And then they gave me an offer as a storyboard artist. Now, uh, when that happened, I, I could have taken the offer and been a storyboard artist and try and work my way up uh, from the inside. But I decided, no, you know, I really need to go for it. So I sent them an email back saying, I really appreciate the offer. But I know that if you choose me as a director, I'll have a lot to bring to this project. So what could I have on my resume to make me a more attractive candidate in the future? And it was my confidence that allowed them to have the confidence to at least give me an interview. And I, I nailed the interview and they took a chance on me. And it's worked out really well. Now, once you become a director, uh, that comes with a lot of challenges too. Uh, one of them, of course, is working with your artists. Now, when you're working with your artists, you need to remember each one of them is an individual, right? Each one of them is a personality that you're going to have to know and you're going to have to know how to work with. You're going to need to know who needs more praise, who needs more criticism, who is open to learning new things and who is not open to learning new things. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to have to push more work onto your better artists who are more ambitious because that's not fair to them, even though it might make for a better episode. You want to make sure that everyone's carrying their weight. And to do that, you need to make sure that you motivate everyone properly. You need to make sure everyone feels safe. And also, you want to be a teacher. You want to be able to give the tools to the people who want the tools to become better artists when they're working under you. Um, it's going to make your job easier because they're going to get more done. It's going to look better. And it's also going to be beneficial for them. It will help them attain their goals. So being a director oftentimes is being a teacher. The best piece of advice that I've ever gotten in getting a job was from my dad. I was on the fourth year of college. He was a little bit worried about me that what am I going to do when I get out of here? And I still kept insisting I'm going to be a director. And he came to me and he said, Tim, you never finish anything. And I could have taken that as criticism and I could have shut down, but instead I took it as a challenge. And that gave me the, the impulse to finish my first full-color 22-page comic book that I wrote and illustrated. I did the whole thing. And I showed it to my dad. He actually loved it. And that became a showpiece for me. I was able to show that at jobs. I was able to show that to, to people who were in the industry. And they could look at that and say, hey, this kid understands storytelling. And that's actually how I got my first storyboarding job was by showing off uh, that comic book and other pieces of artwork. So be a perfectionist. Be striving for perfection, but don't let that stop you. Always finish what you're working on. Move on to the next thing. Get better on the next thing. And never be ashamed to show off your work, even if you see flaws in it. Have the courage to just saddle up to somebody, pull out your phone and say, hey, you want to see something cool? I mean, that's, that's really how I've gotten most of the jobs I've gotten, is just by not being ashamed of showing my work to, to anybody who's willing to look at it and uh, to have confidence that there's value in it. So that, that would be my advice. Know your worth, take the leap, have courage, and finish stuff. That's, that's my advice. So I'm T.G. Hopkins. It's been great talking to you. My name is Ruth Ramirez, and I'm the director of Millie Magnificent. How I got this job? I bounced around as a freelance storyboard artist for about 10 years, mostly around Toronto, but also other studios across Canada. Then I joined Nelvana. I did boards, revs, animatics, even some character cleanup. I had two baby girls during all that time. Then one day, my producer asked if I wanted to try assistant directing. It had never crossed my mind before, but I said, Okay, I'll give it a shot. Did that for a few years. Then one day, my director asked me if I wanted to try directing. And again, it had never crossed my mind, but I said, Okay, I'll give it a shot. And here we are. What I love about directing on Millie? I love being able to add a personal touch to the stories, the designs. I've never been so involved in the overall look and feel of a show. On Millie, there was a lot of, If I was still eight years old, how would I make this prop? What do I use? Then I'd run around the house, opening drawers and cupboards, looking for stuff. I also snuck in my kids' drawings and crafts, and even a pet in the show. I also love that I get to work with some artists who I've looked up to over the years, whose work I really admire. I love my team. 
What are the big challenges of directing? For me, it's trying to find that healthy work-life balance. I have to plan things out real well and work efficiently through the day so I can give my 100% to the show and the crew. Then when it's time to make dinner or take my girls to skating class or they have homework or piano or they want to make a craft or play, then I'm also there for my family 100%. My advice for people who want to work in animation? Do what you love. Whether it's storyboards or design or animation, you gotta love it. Because not gonna lie, it's a lot of work and time and dedication. And each department has its own challenges, whether it's creative or technical. But if you do what you love, you won't mind the challenge. In fact, when you get through that hump, you become a better artist for it. And the process won't feel like work. It'll be a lot of fun instead. What's up, Animation Magazine? My name is Jarrell Dampier, and I'm excited to be one of the rising stars of animation in 2024. Uh, I am a director, writer, and storyboard artist currently at Sony Pictures Animation. And um, I got into this uh, industry back in 2016. At the time, I was working a construction job. And my brothers, my good friends, Justin and Chris Copeland, they saw my work on Instagram. I used to post drawings every day on my lunch break. And um, they reached out to me, and, and the rest was history. That was eight years ago. I love my job because I love being able to use all of these tools, um, sound, visuals, performance, writing, lights, genre. Like I love, I love being able to use all of those tools to tell amazing stories. I think when I was a kid, I thought that I was, I would have to pick, I'd have to pick one, right? Everyone kind of asks you what you want to be when you grow up and they're expecting you to pick a lane. And I feel like being a filmmaker is like a cheat code. You get to smash all those things together because like, well, I want to work with sound and I want to tell stories with words and performance, visuals. I want to, I want actors and lights and you can, you kind of get to use every part of the animal, so to speak. And I feel like it's, it's completely opposite to how the world prepares you to think about your occupation um, when you're older, but you know, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. I love it. I think the pace of our industry can be a little bit challenging. So, you know, it's really up to, it's really up to you and, and up to the individuals, I think, to build an atmosphere where we're able to do great work and also, um, take care of ourselves in the process. So that's something I'm, I'm passionate about at the same time. It is a challenge and it's something that I think, um, a lot of us are working on, uh, in this field right now. I would advise anyone who wants to be in animation, particularly uh, directing as well, is um, to be in love with the process. Learn, learn as much as you can about process. There are a lot of processes in place to get these things done, and I think the more informed you can be at, at you know, those different parts of the process, um, the better equipped you're going to be to utilize those things to, to tell a story. Watch a lot of movies, have fun. Don't forget to go outside and have actual life experience. And um, yeah, there's a saying I heard last year. It really, it helped me out. It was uh, having fun is serious business, right? Um, this should be fun. We're not deflecting meteors. We don't work for NASA. We're making movies. Um, so follow your, your passion for movies and I think you'll be fine. A shout out to Animation Magazine. I'm so uh, grateful, humbled, and honored to be on the 2024 Rising Stars list. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, look, it's time to tell your stories. I want everybody watching this to get activated, learn about the process, have fun, dig in, learn about the craft, and come join us. All right? My name is Sunmin. I am here to answer some questions for Animation Magazine. Yay! I've been blessed to be a 2024 rising star in Animation Magazine for my art director role on Ultraman Rising at Netflix Feature Animation. I've written some info about myself and a few tips that I collected throughout my experience thus far. Here, I'm going to share some more helpful tips on pursuing this career. Tip number one. If you are an international student in college, your number one priority is to obtain an O-1B visa after you graduate. OPT, which is the grace period of a year to three years depending on your degree, is the only time you will have to be able to work freely like a citizen with no visa status limitations. Take advantage of it. Tip number two. The best way to help your art director is to ask 
if they need help on anything they are struggling to do or manage at the moment. As someone who has gone to Mordor and back, I'm here in the Shire to tell you that leadership is a lot of stress and due to things that have nothing to do with the art. Ask if they need your help on anything if you finish your assignment early. It's a good bonding experience and I'm sure your AD will very much appreciate it. Tip number three, your skill as an artist will improve exponentially higher when you go to therapy. And that's not even the main benefit. Are you anxious? Do you compare yourself to others a lot? Do you get upset easily or your friends have pointed out issues about your personality? Pick your problem. Seriously, go do yourself a favor and try counseling. You'll be a happier person. You'll be a better artist. You'll be able to deal with adversities with a sharp mind and calm emotion. People around you will love it too. Tip number four. Find your crew of people who share the same artistic vision and philosophy. There are going to be moments where you question why things are done the way they are, or have the itch to try something different, which in this industry you can only do with the team. Maybe you and the crew will create something groundbreaking, or find out the hard way why folks do the things the way they do them. Who knows, but the only way to find out is through collaboration. And finally, tip number five. In your first leadership experience, which most likely will be very tough on you, observe more and analyze the way each team member communicates, operates, thinks, and deals with issues. This will allow you to customize how you speak with each individual in a way that can deliver the purest form of your intended thoughts. And you'll be able to interpret what the individual is really saying compared to what is actually being said. The key is to put the emphasis on being on the same page and not to dominate a conversation, seem more intelligent, win an argument, etc, etc. And by the way, when you do those things, it's a lot more transparent than you think it is. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I'm really glad to be featured in Animation Magazine 2024. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Hello, Animation Magazine. Uh, thank you so much for adding me to this list of rising stars of 2024. My name is Eric Hawkins. I'm the lighting and compositing supervisor on Jurassic World Chaos Theory. So how did I get this job? I A little bit of luck and a little bit of good timing, I think. I've been working at DreamWorks Television since 2017, and for most of that time, I've been a lighting and compositing supervisor. So when I interviewed um, with the team about this position, um, I really tried to pitch myself as someone who knew how to work within not only the tight timeline we had, uh, but also within the pipeline. I knew the tools well. I knew how to make these shows. I knew how to talk to different departments and that cross-functionality and really focused on how I could help them make this show. Uh, and we could still be ambitious and still deliver something uh, really high quality. Um, I knew what corners to cut and how to work with other departments to make something really special. Uh, I think that's something that you should focus on in any job interview. Uh, your approach should be um, what you can bring to that company or to that show. And so by focusing on that, I think they, I guess they liked what I had to say because here I am. So what do I love most about this job? I love seeing the shots come in. You know, after we put in all this hard work and put our references and direction together and uh, you just throw it out there and it comes back and it looks so wonderful. Um, it's really a great joy to see your ideas come to life and work out so well. All the studying you do, all the training you do, uh, you know, there's a lot of trial and error. So sometimes you're working through ideas uh, during the episodes, uh, but most of the time when they come back, they just look so wonderful and it brings me a lot of joy to uh, see uh, my ideas come to life. Um, also, the team you work with is really, really important in this industry and you work so closely with all the departments, writers, directors, storyboard, design, uh, effects, asset creation, my lighting team. Um, and they're all such a wonderful bunch, kind and patient and collaborative. Uh, production team is lights out. Uh, the support we get uh, at DreamWorks is pretty incredible. I know our team really, really takes good care of us and takes a lot of the stress off of us so we can be in a creative environment. Uh, and everyone is so respectful and supportive.
What is the biggest challenge I face? The biggest challenge I face is being at the almost the end of the pipeline as far as the visual storytelling goes. Uh, I feel a great responsibility to make sure that everyone's hard work really pays off. Um, a lot of thought goes into the design, a lot of thought goes into the writing, um, and I see my teammates working so hard and producing all this great work. I really am surrounded by major talent and it can be a little intimidating when it all comes to you. It has to come together. Um, you know, the, the design has done their job. Writing has done their job. Animation has done their wonderful job. And if I don't do my job, it's all for naught. Uh, it can really, really wear on me and stress me out a little bit. And I think on the other side of that, back to what I love so much about that is I think that's that plays into it because there's a lot of relief that comes from uh, seeing the work come back and looking so fantastic. And it's like, okay, I did it um, sometimes. And um, I think, you know, people spend so much of their, their time, so much of their lives working on this and building up to this this moment this is the finish line um i mean it's still the the scoring and the wonderful actors we have um and the editing that goes into the process uh, but you know I, f I feel that weight i feel the the weight on my shoulders to deliver on par with the quality that uh the re i see the rest of the team producing what advice do I have to give to aspiring artists or people looking to get into the industry or people already into the industry would be learn how to take feedback. Um, you can be really close to your creative uh, vision and your creative direction uh, and you think it's the best, you hope it's the best, you cross your fingers and, and you know sometimes it might not be what your showrunners are looking for or you might not really agree on what the important thing on the screen is uh, so it's one thing to defend your work and explain your ideas and i think that can be very very helpful um, but other times like they are more likely closer to the story and know more about that moment than than you might and that's part of your job is to extract that information so if you got it wrong you know take your licks and move on um, but I think it's there's value in uh, sharing your ideas and why you thought a certain way and what your thought process is, but try not to be defensive. Try not to get uh, hurt. I think artists are very vulnerable, uh, especially when you feel very passionate about something um, and you really loved how it turned out, and then you find out that it wasn't you know right for the story. And I think that's the the bigger picture is what is right for the story in that moment. So uh, this team is really respectful and fantastic about sharing their ideas uh, and discussing ideas. And, you know, sometimes you might have a better idea, but in the end, uh, we all get um, criticized or your work gets criticized and it can, it can, it's easy to take that the wrong way and turn around and be negative. And I think that will not get you jobs in the future. Uh, help your team tell their story uh, and be friendly and learn from those, those moments. You're working with a lot of seasoned and talented folks and they have a lot to share. Uh, you don't know everything and sometimes you're asked to know everything. Um, so um, yeah, I think that's the, the best advice I can give. Thank you so much, Animation Magazine, and to the DreamWorks team that uh, got me on this list. Uh, it's such an honor, very humbling, and congratulations to the other rising stars of 2024. Hey everyone, my name is Kristen Garland, and I am an art director with Wild Canary Animation, working on Disney Junior's Ariel. I was currently wrapping up on another series when I got an email saying, would you like to do some development work? And of course I said yes. 
I would say the biggest part is that I really, really love all the people that I'm working with. The artists on my team are so incredibly talented and seeing the designs that they put together and bring to our uh, art reviews week after week is so exciting. It's so inspiring. So I, I feel really lucky to be working with such talented people. I think the biggest thing is just waiting for the show to come out. I really want to talk about it. I want everyone to see all of the hard work that my team has been doing over the past few years. So Everyone's career path is going to be completely different. Um, so try not to compare yourself to other people. I know that's easier said than done, but really just stay focused on your own goals and stay focused on areas where you may need a little improvement. I think especially when you're in a creative field, being able to critique yourself can be incredibly invaluable. And that can also lead you to stretch in ways that you haven't before. Maybe explore different avenues, different disciplines that you may have um, tossed to the side earlier. So yeah, I would just say like keep an open mind um, and, and, and just keep pushing forward. You know, this can be a very long journey but it can be a very amazing, amazing time full of wonderful opportunities. So just keep doing your best and people will notice you. I've, I, I've worked here and I got to see the previous Kung Fu Pandas, you know, get developed and released and they're just so awesome. And it's really cool to, to finally have an opportunity to, to work on one of the Kung Fu Pandas. I help the production designer um, bring the the story to life visually um, and and just work with with uh, the rest of the, the departments in the pipeline to just make the best looking thing uh, we can. We have the we have the familiar stuff in the movie, which is the Valley of Peace. So it was you know getting Poe and Jen into a new part of their world. And designing that stuff, right, is is that was really cool. Is is adding a new city to you know the franchise and and what's already been done before, um, exploring what that would look like, how it looks, how the villains layer looks. Um, that that was that was a big design challenge. Yeah, designing stuff is overall overall designing stuff is my favorite part. Um, it's cool. Uh, it, it, it 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 yeah. It really doesn't matter what it is, but um, yeah, Juniper City was a, was a real, uh, that was a lot of fun to, to design. Early on, we, we, early on, because we're working um, simultaneously with what story's up to, we, we, we didn't know how we would arrive to Juniper City. So, you know, just designing it from the standpoint of knowing that we get there on a boat and what that would feel like arriving to a city on a, on a boat, on a dock, getting introduced to the world and getting the sights and smells of, of what happens on a dock, uh, food carts, uh, and just getting introduced to the world that way was, was uh, how we approached that design. When, it's, when, it's, when we design a world that's based around humans, we have a pretty much good idea of how big things should be because you know humans aren't normally twice as tall as each other and in the in the world with animals we have characters like bulls and we have characters that are small like little piglets and they have to coexist in the same city so yeah that does present a, a challenge and uh we, we just got to find a way to to do that and, and 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 shoot it you know our, our our friends in layout can can help out with that a lot luckily you know the characters aren't too yeah yeah they are there's some pretty crazy scale differences Poe and the chameleon <laughs> yeah. it's it's, an, it's a challenge and and how to design around it that's the fun part if, if it was easy it would wouldn't be fun is there anything new that I learned on this movie this is my first time art directing so yeah everything was was pretty new um, uh, so yeah I did learn something learn how to art direct something okay Kung Fu Panda and four words it's it's epic it's uh, beautiful it's it's creative and it's uh, collaborative. Shannon Taylor, art director.
I got this job through, uh, I think I've worked on quite a few of the Magic Light productions before as an animator and a compositor. Um, but my backing, I guess, is in fine arts, and I've always uh, been very keen to move into art direction. I've art directed a few television commercials and then landed the opportunity to art direct on the latter half of Smeds and Smooth. Um, loved it and moved on to Tabby McTat, and that was incredibly special. And now art directing on the next one, which I'm not allowed to talk about. I love watching how the stories and characters environments are interpreted from the uh, initial illustrations in the book. I think seeing how something can change from a, a 2D loose illustration into something quite solid and it gets lit and shaded and, and uh, rigged and starts to breathe and have life and personality, it's incredibly, incredibly rewarding. Toughest challenge of the job? I'm sure there's a few. The biggest one, I guess, for myself is knowing when to end the day. You can continue working into the night thinking, I've got this. It's going to get better and better and better. And actually, in the morning, you take a look and you're like, it was better at 5 o'clock. <laughs> I think not every young adult gets their dream job straight out of college or even gets the opportunity to go to college. Uh, these, internet, these days, the internet gives you uh, every kind of platform to learn, grow, and show off your talent. Um, in my opinion, solid work ethic, enthusiasm, a little bit of humility, uh, the dream job will come to you. I think it's important to know that not every uh, young kid gets the opportunities that some other kids can get. And knowing now in today's world, you have so much accessible that's for free, that really there's nothing that you can, that nothing can stop you getting into the industry. Uh, Pretty much your platforms are out there. You can put something up, you can practice, you can learn, you can ask people to quit, uh, quit your work. And um, and the industry is watching. The industry watches, you know, the media, the, the people out there are your biggest judges. <laughs> Not every young adult gets their dream job straight out of college. Sometimes you have to work damn hard to get somewhere really good, or somewhere that you're really proud of. Uh, the trick is to stick at it, um, keep practicing. You know, not everybody has the luxury of going to a fancy college. You have to maybe learn yourself or just, you know, uh, just keep at it. Um, but ultimately, it's not really about your fancy CV. If your if your reel looks good, the, the industry is looking. You know, the industry is is just kill, keen on and skilled. Hello, my name is Uwe Heitschutter. I'm the lead character designer on the movie That Christmas that will stream later this year on Netflix. In 2020, Locksmith Animation reached out to me to explore um, characters for their new movie written by Richard Curtis and with Simon Otto as director attached. A couple of months earlier, I worked with Simon before on a project, but just for two weeks. So I was really happy that he wanted to work with me again. As a character designer, for me, it was really cool that the leading team noticed the importance of um, having the character designer attached to the film for the whole process. So after I was done with the the actual design, they kept me to guide the modeling process and help with textures um, and even to, to the, um, till we got to animation. So I was um, able to do drawers for animators. So um, that's really a great fun for me and a privilege, but also I think very valuable for the production. So, um, yeah, I was happy about that. I think the biggest challenge for me was um, when I was guiding my characters through all these uh, processes and, and worked with the artists who actually built these characters and created them, um, to, yeah, to find the right balance between 
giving my idea about the characters, but also step back in the right moment to give the artists enough room to, to bring their ideas to the table and um, make the characters even better than I imagined. Um, yeah, and at some point I had to make sure that we don't get off the pass and that we do, don't lose the initial ideas we had for that. Um, yeah, I think that was the biggest challenge. I think don't let it become just a job because it's really special to, to have the opportunity to earn your money with making movies. And, uh, and I think for the whole team, it's, it's, it's always the best if people are motivated, if they're, if they really like what they do. Um, and also for yourself. I mean, it's, it's your time and, and you want to spend it with something uh, kind of meaningful. I think this team effort really shows in, in our movie that Christmas and um, I can't wait for you to see it soon on Netflix. Thanks.